to another segment of Hepburn's Helpful Hints. Well, as many of you know, I went from 20 years in the classroom to ta -da, teaching from a cart. And here is the most anticipated cart Hepburn's Helpful Hint video. As soon as I found out that I was moving to a cart, I started checking out carts around the hallway to figure out which one I wanted. And I ended up with this one. I knew I wanted it color-coded, just like my classroom. And so I got permission from my principal to, to do this, to spray paint it, to decorate the cart up. That's important, because this is school property. You need to make sure that it's okay with the powers that be, that you make permanent changes to it. Next, what I did, and this much like when you first move to a classroom, it takes a lot of your time. It's going to be your own time because pre-planning is spent getting ready for the school year and you're going to have a lot of meetings and stuff like that. So I definitely worked late to do this. But I found the place where the custodians um, run water over things and they can get pretty wet in there, obviously. And I took my cart and some towels and I sprayed it down and I turned it upside down and sprayed it down and then I dried it off and brought it out in the sun for a little while. I recommend doing this not only did it help get my cart clean from years of use, I don't think it had ever been cleaned, it also has to do with wanting to put new energy in it and getting the old energy out and to me that was a way to do that. After it was dry, just like you spray paint anything, I put masking tape around the places that I wanted spray painted and, and went to work. I decorated some depending on the time of year. This is spring and this is what the side of my cart looks like. Alright, so here's the front of my cart and just a little bit of logistics of how I got the color added. I did spray paint, it's hard for you to see from your angle, but I did spray paint this inside pink. And in order to get this green on the outside, I got fadeless paper and scotch packing tape and just taped around the edges. One of the things I noticed as I was scooting around the hallways was that my stuff kept on falling off. I used shelf liner to help me, black of course, to match the edges, to help make it so that my stuff doesn't fall off my card anymore. I even went as far as to put it on the, these shelves as well, and that has been really helpful. Another thing that started happening is that even with my dry erase boards in here and the shelf lining, my dry erase boards were still falling out. So what I did was, take a folder that had writing paper in it, green of course to match, and slipped it down in here. And that seemed to solve the problem. Another thing I keep in mind is which side of the cart is in the front. Just like your classroom and the, the bulletin board that you put outside your classroom, my cart is the representation of me in the hallway. And it's important to me that it looks nice, neat, and pretty. So I'm always sure to make this the front part when I'm walking down the hallway. Another way that I've made my cart functional is with the carabiner hooks. Green from the thrift store, of course green, right here and it slips right in there if I ever want some more room to carry some. This is the side of the cart that I do most of my teaching from. This dry erase board is magnetic, which is awesome because everything I do has magnets on the back for, to make it easy for me to move around from one topic to another. Another thing is my eraser and my dry erase markers are within reach so that when I am teaching, 
using these, they're right here. I don't have to dig around for them. I connected this dry erase board with a C-clamp. The reason why is I might want to use a different sized whiteboard. I might go in a spell when I don't want my whiteboard on there, and it will be easy for me to take it on and off. Here's the other side of my cart. This is the one I tend to push from. And I've also attached little hooks. I had to put extra adhesive on it just to make, because I noticed that they fell off. So if you run across that, you might need to be creative. And obviously, this is my pointer hook that the children love to use to help find things on the word wall or whatever activity it, activity it is that I, that I want them to use it for. It's really easy for me to get to. Here is one of the parts of my cart that I really like. One of the things that is important to me is that I do not interrupt the classroom teacher to borrow things like a stapler, tape, um, paper clips. I use these kind of clips a lot, so I keep them on the edge right here so I can grab them with ease. I've got post-it notes and a permanent sharpie, another pen. My dry erase markers are stored upside down. Whenever possible, store them that way in your own classroom or on your own cart because it really extends the life of them. I've had these for three years and they still work and I do believe it's because I consistently store them upside down. You may want to consider having a pencil sharpener on your cart so that you don't have to interrupt the teacher for it. Mine is called the best pencil sharpener ever and it really is. So consider having the necessities on your cart with you so that your small group instruction and the classroom teacher's instruction can be the most effective. Along with having the necessities that you need available on your cart, also consider having everything that the kids could need. I carry around sharpened pencils, colored pencils, glue sticks, scissors, everything that I want the students to use to, to complete whatever activity I'm asking is right here, so nobody is inconvenienced. I love teaching my small groups from this cart. If you are also in a situation where you are teaching from a cart, I hope that you have found these hints to be helpful, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do.